Okay. Uh, so we did um, some of these swallows last time, but we'll what we'll review never hurt. Um, so where is my mouse? Okay. Um, there we go. All right. Let me zoom in. Okay. So some of these are not going to be 100% right in terms of the bowls that we're looking at, but um, we'll just kind of go with these ratings. So I guess let's, um, you know, the first thing I like to do when reviewing a feeds video is look at their anatomy before any bolus was given to get an idea of the color of the tissue, the anatomy of the tissue. So in case we get views later on and we're like, is that blue water? Is it green water? Is it vascularity? Is it secretions? We have an idea of what they look like beforehand. It also gives an idea of what their anatomy looks like in terms of the space, the molecula, the space of the piriforms. Um, you know, like even here, we're already seeing like, oh, they've got like this cartilage thing that we might think of as aspiration later on. So this is pre-swallow pringle laryngoscopy. I'm gonna just see if my volume is... So actually, um, we see a decent amount of secretions for this individual. So we might judge their secretions actually during this as well. Um, okay, so looking at just this image, <clears throat> how full is the molecular with oral fungal secretions? Okay, others? Okay. Yeah, somewhere at three or four, I think. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in that region as well. I'd probably say like, yeah, I'd probably say like five-ish or something. So um, since this is secretions, this is the very first one, um, we'll say five here. Do you want to do this before we start rating generally, like here's the secretion? Yeah, I mean, normally, People don't have too many secretions with the people that we see, but yeah. Um, all right, so this is a good view of the epiglottis. So take this into account, plus anything lower down, which we don't see. So then epiglottis secretions. How covered is the epiglottis with secretions? I'm just gonna keep moving it around. Something lower down. Yeah. So what are we thinking? Like a ten? Okay. Seven, ten, eight, nine. Okay. Yeah, I think I could get behind that. I mean, like, if we like move all this over here. If this is like 50% of what we're seeing, then this would be like 25% of what we're seeing. This would be maybe more like 12 and a half percent of what we're seeing. And then we're also not seeing maybe like 20% of it. So I'm at like a little less than 10 or something like that. Um, so let's say something like that. Um, hypopharynx, how much of the hypopharynx is filled with secretions? You see like that, those strings, really like what else are we seeing? Yeah, so super small amount in the hypopharynx. Okay, let's go to then. Um, vestibule, do we have any secretions that we are 
seeing. Aside from it just being looking lubricated, it's like, yeah, we're not really seeing anything else anywhere else. Okay, so zero, zero, zero. All right, so now we saw their anatomy. Let's go to um, the first swallow. So maybe I'll kind of go through a couple of these since these are some, actually, no, we've already done these, so we can kind of rate these together very quickly. So if I see C green liquid, yes, orange. And what we usually do for most these salts is just maybe the orange will follow. Yeah. Try not to do an extra salt, okay? That's just, yeah, it's just their tongue and maybe it needs a little cleaning. Drop it up to the syringe. Drop it up to the other. This one will follow. Yeah, so it's just like the same. Okay, so now we'll go back to where the where the residue. Probably around here. All right, so oral pharynx. What oops, what would we rate the oral pharynx? Two. Great, I agree. There's some like coating, but it's not actually filling up that three-dimensional space. Hypopharynx. So this is what we're seeing. Ideally, we're judging it when it's appearing its largest, but we already see that there's not much cooling. So that's kind of what we're left with. Okay, so two, epiglottis, we see like that. So we're thinking about how much surface area is that covering, and it's kind of like this blanket effect where it's completely coating, as opposed to kind of that random spread. 15. Oh. Yeah, all right. So there's all of that. But I think still that's not like in terms of total surface area, the epiglottis isn't a lot, but it's completely coded um, for that part. So 16.5. <laughs> 16 okay. Other other numbers? Okay. Yeah, I kind of agree I'm on that 15 point. Um vestibule. Okay, and where are you seeing the one? Yeah, so where the apricotic fold is merging into the arytenoids, essentially. Okay, yeah. Um, so there's one. Anyone? We're not very last slide, and it's like the same spot. Look over here. I'm sorry, so much lower. Uh, oh, here? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would wonder if that's something. Um, and I'm leaning towards it is, but um, but it's still such a small amount that it probably it's not going to affect the overall rating. But yeah, my eye went there, and I do think it's something. Um, and then the only other thing I was wondering is this yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, either way, um, very small amount. So maybe like two or one. Um, wait, well, there we go. Um, vocal folds. I could wonder how someone's wondering that. That's probably light shimmering. So we'll, oh, or secretions. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of see that secretion break. Right vocal fold, like at the very bottom of the The where? See that like dot at the bottom, but then it like ended up. Oh, down there? Yeah. Yep. Just like great. Okay, so zero. And then subglottis. Zero. Great. So then we do our residue ratings, and then I kind of start to think about the temporal boundaries. So then I see nothing beforehand. Then I'm looking to see when do we get the onset of the swallow so that uninterrupted movement. Okay, so it's probably around this region. So then there was nothing beforehand that was filling in. Oops. 
Why is it keep switching the volume? That'd be really nice. Okay, so so that's so right there, like in Dr. Walter, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking so this looks like it's kind of the onset, right? And then it dips back down for a second. So it's unclear if it would appear as though that would be the this would be the onset of um, the swallow since it actually dips back down and we can see that the bolus is now getting passed and it's entering into the hypopharynx. So you might say oral cavity if you had judged this to be the onset of the swallow. Um, if you had judged that to be the onset of the swallow, then you'd say hypopharynx. So there's a little bit of reliability issue there with determining the exact frame. Um, and it might, it won't always be this kind of back and forth, um, but that would be where the reliability should arise from. It's more an issue of the frame that you're using rather than the actual anatomic boundaries. So we'll say that um, bolus location at swallow onset was actually within the hypopharynx because we'll use that last um, frame. Then, and there was nothing present there before, so that would be a PS of one. Then they swallow. It looks like it looks like they do two swallows. Okay, and now there's no big change, and so we know that there was vestibular residue present um, and there was no change from during to after so that happened during the swallow then there was no change so this would be a ps of one and we also know that there was no change as we were advancing the scope so that would also be a ps of one um, and then we also noted that they had two swallows i'm kind of wondering if they had three swallows she said chin up we get white out it's hard to know if they actually swallowed or they were just kind of like guarding. And this is a limitation with bees. We don't always 100% know. So I could see three here as well, but I'm going to go with two. Notes, like, would you put something like that? Like, yeah. Clear if two or three swallows. Yeah. Like, also visualization of before the, like, the, during the swallow. Yeah, I think that's exactly what you would do. Okay. Yeah. So, like, the timing, or it's really kind of like the onset of the swallow. Well, yeah, we debate if you your point. So onset could have been either way from oral cavity. Okay, and that's what you yeah, exactly. Um, okay, great. That's good. Now we'll go to the next swallow and I'll just do this to show you kind of uh, from like a speed standpoint and I, I might walk through this. Okay, so this is the second swallow. Two more times like that. Okay, trying to see what I wanted. Yeah. Open up, Now do it. One single swallow whenever you're ready. So here we can appreciate that coding effect a lot more. Okay, so then I'm just gonna move to here. Right, super, why does it do that? Ish. And then hypopharynx. Maybe it'll be another three ish. And then epiglottis. So, epiglottis, um, I'll kind of talk through this quickly. We see that like the spread of the residue is a lot, but not all of the mucosa is covered. So, when I see this type of pattern, I think about how much spread is there. And this spread is likely covering. Um, you know, probably around what 50%, let's say roughly. And then if I saw a spread, but not complete kind of covering or blanket effect, then I would say I would half that. And then depending on how much or how not much we're seeing, I would either kind of um, increase it or decrease it. So I would say, okay, I'm seeing 50% of the mucosa. It's the spread. I'm going to cut it in half. So that's 25%. But honestly, there's a lot more rather than less. I'm going to up it. Um, so maybe I'm at like 40% of what I'm seeing. Plus then we have this kind of blanket stuff down here and let's see if we get another view. Oh yeah, so then like this under, this kind of 50%, it looks like is almost completely coded but we don't get visualization of the left side. Um, so now I'm thinking like this is an extra 25%. 
and then we can see spread. So I'm probably at like an 80 for the epiglottis. Vestibule, we of course have that little bit on the left area epiglottic fold. Um, we can see, I'm looking in this region here. This I would not consider, but I'm looking to see if there's anything there and I don't really see anything. Maybe that little speck, which won't affect the overall rating. That, this, no, but then technically like that little bit right there, this little bit right there. Again, it's not gonna affect the overall rating. I'm just saying that so you cone your eye. So whatever, maybe like two. Local folds, we see a speck, a speck, but that's light. So nothing, nothing. And now we go to PAS before, during, and after. So here, actually, so that's actually when we start to kind of get upward movement, right? It's not a lot, but it's when we start to get the upward movement. So I would say oral cavity, and we see no airway invasion. And then we have one swallow, no change, and then there was no change. So it would be one, three, one, one, oops, one, one, oops, gosh, there we go. And then this would be oral cavity then number of swallows is one. Why wouldn't it be oral pharynx? Because um, like you see like a lot of um, so, oops. so the question is why not oral pharynx? And yeah, head of bolus is right there. I think. Why is my arrow losing? Okay. Um, so, because this is the frame that, this is the frame that I'm using as the onset of during the swallow. I'm looking at this region right here and trying to see this tilt up and forward, right? And it's still up and forward, still up and forward, still up and forward. And so the onset of that up and forward movement is occurring right here. And we don't see it in the cavity it is literally the next frame yeah. um so it is very close and i understand why you're saying that but this is the frame um so when we judge both location and swallow onset we look at the frame that we we're deciding is the onset of during the swallow this is the frame that the deciding is during the swallow we don't see it in this view and so we would say oral cavity oh, but if i thought like oh this looks like it's actually the onset because it's a little bit more brisk and things are a little bit more blurry, which is kind of what we use for fluoro. Well, then here we do see it. And then you would say oral pharynx and you would be right. So it's really kind of more of an issue of our reliability of the frame that we're using for during the swallow. But this is the frame that I'm using because technically I'm starting to see move, upward movement and it's uninterrupted and it's leading to the endoscopic white out. Um, but yeah, great eye, great eye. Okay, so now it right? Yes, yes, thank you. Um great, thank you. Okay, so now let's you all do this one. Last time like that, and Okay, so let's go to the point of oral fundal residue.
So I rewound it because I'm trying to figure out, did she start to advance the scope and then he swallowed? And if that's the case, then we would be judging the residue before he did that extra swallow um, because there is actually a difference in the residue ratings. So it's like, this is his rest. Okay, so she didn't advance the scope. So this would be like an example of that functional stuff, right? So this is functionally where he's at, although it took him a few swallows. And if we had said like single swallow and this is what we're stuck with, we're actually starting to see more impairment here, right? And so it's giving us different information. This is probably his impairment level, but when he's doing what he does, he gets to a good spot, so that's good. Both of that is really helpful information. And so this is why I think natural and single swallows are, are helpful um, for an evaluation. So this is what we're left with for oral pharynx. So we're trying to think about how much of that blue water are we seeing, the blue opaque water. Um, so oral pharynx, what would you all give? How, uh, say that again? Four. OK. Others? Other thoughts? OK, all right. I was definitely thinking more like two-ish. Um, but I'm thinking I'm not really seeing much actual pooling and here-ish. Yeah. I could see that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. And we also kind of see like this, which looks like it's got height to it, maybe. Um. What was your rating, Macy? I feel like a seven or eight. Seven I or eight. Like how much the thought it was doing. I mean, I still think a seven or eight, it's an overestimate. I can see how it looks like it's not pooling or how it's not coding. Um, but I think if you're saying seven to eight, you're getting close to 10. And then you're saying if you had 10 of everything that we're seeing, it would be filled up to the rim okay, of the, so yeah. So I think like, even though we're still seeing maybe like little globlets <laughs> rather than just coding, I don't think that it's actually filling up this from the rim all the way to the base of the, this, because that's a huge area. I don't think it's actually filling that up. I think even 5% might be an overestimate. It probably wouldn't affect our overall ratings that much, mm -hmm. um, because I think even 20 of these, which would, what that would be, um, would be not filling up this entire space. Um, totally just splitting hairs for training purposes. Mm -hmm. So I, I still feel pretty strongly around two, but I think I could see five. Um, let's split the difference. Mm. Yeah, let's do two. Okay, that's kind of splitting it more my end, but that's fine. Um, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, great, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, okay, so now let's do hypopharynx. One. One. I think this is a good example of right now, the piriforms while the person is adducted, they're really kind of squeezing their pharynx and the piriform just looks smaller right now. And so like this looks like it's actually like occupying more space than it actually would be if it was actually relaxed and it's in its largest position. But yeah, I agree that it's, well, and we want to capture what's present after the swallow and we're advancing the scope is between. So if we actually take it further back here, we don't really see anything. So yeah, we'll go with one. Epiglottis, how much blue are we seeing on the epiglottis? But also, like, I can't see the underside. underside yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we're all kind of looking at this region, right? Yeah. Like, so that's that. Yeah. So then if we split this in half, then this would be approximately 50%. We're essentially almost seeing this entire half. We just don't see this half. So, if we have this being 50%, and we move this over here, that would be 25%. I don't think it's taking up that. So, I think it's like half. So, I would say like 10 to 12%. So maybe we'll cut our differences in quality loving. Um, vestibule. Yeah, zero, zero, zero. Okay, great. Zero, zero, oops, zero, zero. That makes these all ones, which makes our life easy. Yeah, yes. And then location and number of swallows. Single swallow whenever you're ready. So here we had whiteout and it wasn't from the swallow, it was from the velum. And so it, 
it obscures our ability a little bit to judge the temporal boundary, but it looks as though sometimes what patients will do too is they'll kind of like guard a little bit. So their palate will raise as we're like delivering stuff into their mouth. And then once we like, once they either take their cup away or we take something away, they'll close their mouth, they'll start breathing through their nose, the palate will drop, we get a quick view before they actually start to swallow. And I think that's what we actually see here, right? So we get brief view and then they actually go to swallow, right? Yeah, exactly. So here it's like they're breathing and then we start to get that upward movement and then it leads to white out. So yeah, I would say, oral pharynx. Um, it doesn't look like it's crossing any sort of extra boundary. And now, so that's oral pharynx. Now let's think about the number of swallows that they do. So it's one. Okay, two. Okay, so two. Um, so oral pharynx and then two. So even though we are, and this is giving us really good information, right? Even though we're cueing this person do a single swallow, they're not able to do it oftentimes. Um, and that I think is pretty insightful as well. Um, all right, now maybe I'll do one. And, um, this is a small mouthpiece, or it, uh, I guess, yeah, you can take it. So one single swallow with that, which is five to three feet, Noted that they just did one swallow and make note of any sort of thoughts. So I've learned since this, and now I've, I've really made sure that people don't say E and I would just want them to do rest breathing. So that's the thing I would adjust about this. Um, so this is after the swallow. This is what we're seeing, super small amount. So I'm going to say two hypopharynx. Epiglottis. First impressions, I don't really see anything. Nothing green, I'm convinced of. Vestibule. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. And then this would be one, 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 one. Um, where was full sufficient syllable onset? So that would be so oral cavity. Any questions about my readings just then? Any that you are adamantly opposed to? I'm open, open to suggestions. Okay. Um, great. Um, all right, why don't you all try one now? Okay, so go back to after the swallow, essentially. That's what we left us, so oral pharynx. Okay. Others? All right. Wait, five to 10. Five to 10, all right. So then you'll pick seven then. All right, so we've got an eight, a seven, a what? Seven, eight, okay, great. So we're like looking at this, 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 great. I'm, <clears throat> I think I'm a little bit lower. I'm probably at like a five region, maybe even a four. Um, yeah, so I think seven, so if we multiply this by 10, then we're saying it's, it would essentially be like almost like up to there. <clears throat> It'd be like 70% full, like up to here, going all the way across to the base of the tongue. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm buying that. I feel like they're weird to multiply. 
it's cool, like, right? So it's yeah. Like, so it should be, like, you know, like, eight is, like, what? Like, you know, 12 times or whatever. Yeah, so you think 12 times that would fill up from the top, from this rim, straight across the basis song. So if you imagine like those imaginary areas like going here and kind of imagining like that cone pyramid, like all of that space. Because I think sometimes what people do, and I'm not saying this is what you all are doing, is they think about it almost like relative to like pretty much just the height of the epiglottis and not thinking about the fact that it's like this pyramid volume space. Um, so use that as a check as well. Um, I'm just wondering any other like tips I can think of. Um, yeah. Um, I, what I thought you touched on at one point is like all the residue that's outside of yep. that cell and the oral pharynx. Yeah. We're also kind of putting that in exactly. the molecular as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So in my head, like what I'm, there's like this coding, mm -hmm. which I probably wouldn't do much with in terms of pushing it in my head, yeah. but there is this, which is not technically contained within the molecular. There is that, which technically is not contained within the molecular, and that I would be like putting in. Um, understanding that a big bubble is taking up a big portion of this. So it's really kind of like that. Um, the coding, it's like, I'm not like trying to scoop that essentially. So. Yeah, I mean, I still, I think it's probably, I would probably say five. Um, I probably wouldn't go above five, okay. but. What's the most goal you've ever seen it? Like... Oh, um, I've definitely seen, <clears throat> um, in terms of liquids, I've seen it nearly 100% when they've done like cereal swallows and like, get glimpses of like between swallows. Um, but certainly it's going to be greater with puddings. Um, and the thing is, is that we don't have enough normative data to know like, oh, when it's like maybe for liquids, it being 40% full is actually pretty severe, right? Or like, or being it being like 30% full is pretty severe. So it's, that's the, that's a like a, a uh, a nice thing to kind of try to keep remembering is that we're not trying to make impressions and we don't, we don't want to like think like, well, it looks severe. So I want to give it a higher number. Like we may ultimately find, oh yeah, 30% for liquids. That's like really not good. <laughs> like what is this person doing? And so, um, I don't know, is that kind of like where you were getting I'm at? I'm just like struggling to understand like what it, like it, cause in my opinion, like that looks like, oh, maybe that's not a that's not great it's like yeah based on what i've seen but then like it being five percent like it doesn't sound bad yeah so i was just trying to yeah so like don't get in that trap we want to try to keep it um what we we want to try to try to take like clinical experience out of it or clinical impressions out of it and more just like if i was looking at this cup i'm like how full is my cuppy cup with water right now or coffee oh it's like five percent full like yeah and like not thinking about the clinical implications yet and so yeah like i don't know like it's like mild moderate like if you're looking at the like because of the pooling and like the yeah i mean if you use the yale yeah you can't see the ligament um yeah, I mean the well the mild would say five to twenty-five percent of the um of this is full. Yeah, and I'm at five percent right now actually. I didn't even think about that. So the trace would be one to actually they have overlapping numbers, I think, one to five percent. So um, and I agree, I think we're seeing some stuff kind of fill up and it's kind of uniform across, which is probably why I'm not at like a two to three percent, but I think like yeah, like maybe if we had 20 of these, I think it would be full. Okay, we, we have some strong opinions, I, I see. So let's go with, let's do, my formal opinion would be this, but can re, like, re, we can do like, or exactly. Like that. That's the beauty, beauty, beauty of this being a continuous scale. That's the big beauty. Because let's say I did say 4% and I felt pretty strongly and we did the Yale, then now we're at the difference between trace and mild yeah. we're at the difference between two categories but we're really just at the difference between like four to seven percent yeah. like which is not a lot so um so yes okay great hypopharynx
Yeah. So what are we looking at here? What are our, our eyes? Where? Um, on the patient's right. Here. So there. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh huh. So we have like mainly this plus a little bit of like I don't know if that's actual pooling or not, and then like stringy stuff. So wait, what was your number again? Two. Two. Okay. So when I see something like this, I try now to estimate, I'm like now ignoring their left piriform and I look at their right piriform and I'm saying, how full is the right piriform alone? Um, and so we like lose visualization of that part of the piriform, but that's not a lot of volume. Um, so yeah, so you think, um, so do you think, I guess like 4% of this, this pure form is full ish. Yeah. Okay. 4%. What do you all think? What are other thoughts? How full is just the right pure form? Just the right pure form is. I mean, it's not very, it's just kind of like a yeah i think it's actually a little bit more like prominent i think it's like maybe like 10 percent i i could see like 10 of these probably encompassing yeah that makes sense yeah okay. So then I think if I did that, and this is the only thing I was judging for the piriforms, that would bring my piriform residue wow. to 5%. Right. Um, but then there's like that little so thing. So then maybe eight. like 11, or yeah, six, something like or that. 11. That is, again, we are splitting hairs. I'm just trying to like refine our eyes and stuff. Yeah. That's all. So um, great, so something like that. Uh, epiglottis. This was the white. This was white. Okay. Yeah. So kind of what I'm thinking through here is I'm thinking about this. This becomes a lot more issue with um, coding stuff and then the two dimensional structures. I think about the spread like the parameter of it. And then is it this blanket effect or is it not complete coding? And so we see kind of like these lines, so it's not complete coding with maybe a blanket effect here. So what's the spread? If it's not complete coding, I typically cut it in half and then I like up it or down it based off of how much of the mucosa we're seeing. Um, so what are you thinking through that method? What would you say for the epiglottis? Right. So we have that, and then we have this. Okay. Mm-hmm, me too. Okay. Yeah, I'm at like the 30% region. So I think we're all kind of in the same region. And I'm just way off. Yeah, I think you're a little I, off. I guess they go 25. Okay. And then when you zoomed in and it looked like really stringy. It did look very stringy, but it looked like it was covered. Yeah. Like this part looks like it's like less stringy. Um, and then this this part looks like it's stringy. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, I think this is like looks like it's like less stringy and then this part looks like it's stringy. So like so you're saying the right side is more covered than the left side? Yeah, it's like I mean all of this is like a a blizzard right here, right? And then yeah, same thing here. It. And then here we're actually like getting lines with like little bits of mucosa in between, you know, but there's like, I can't find any mucosa in there. Um, so this is, yeah, I, I'm kind of more like a 30% region. Um, vestibule. Let's get in there. Oops. Okay. 
like I think this is kind of bringing to Macy's point. It's like this one now looks a little bit more severe, but like 10 doesn't sound super severe in my head. But it's okay, like, but like that's why about 10 percent. Exactly. Yes, I mean, exactly. Exactly. Serious. So what are um I mean, yeah, you're thinking 10 percent, but I was just kind of throwing this example out. So what do what do others think in terms of I think dividing it into thirds and covering it so the third looks worse? Which is interesting. <laughs> Okay. I don't Yeah, I think like if we moved all of this to one area, yeah, it would be like less than half of that area being covered. So it's like in my head, I'm like, it's no more than 15, and I, I would totally buy 10. So Pardon? Have you ever think you have like a cooling in the back of the wall? Probably with like a pudding or a cracker. So in that case, it'd be like more than hundred. Like we that is a limitation, and we don't know how to address it yet. We don't know how to address it yet. Kind of like that's such a like, like large space that could be like so three dimensional. So why are we creating all this coding? Because it very rarely happens that we okay. get any sort of vertical height to okay. these structures that are placed horizontally or vertically. Okay. Um, and the only time you'd really see something like that is with a solid or a pudding, which okay. happens less frequently. So for now, we've stuck with the idea of how much the mucosa is covered. Okay. But we understand that we might change the method with the consistency over time it hasn't okay. been done yet but you bring up a very good point and we struggled with that okay. um typically don't see it with liquids it's typically just um i mean we might see it with liquids on the vocal folds actually but then when the vocal folds are at rest then it's typically lays out is that just because of gravity because they're like this or like they're like a slide like, the vocal folds no, the, the vestibule, the vestibule. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the vestibule is like, like this. If you're in a pool, it would just like meet. It would right just like, yeah. Okay. yeah, it would just like not collapse, you know. Um, but if it's pudding, it might kind of yeah, stick and kind of come out. So, okay, yeah. So we say 10. Vocal folds. What does it look like? Yeah, I mean, at first I was like, wait, what was that? And then I was just like, oh, wait, I move it a few frames. It like goes away. So it's definitely just light. Um, I could see someone being like, is that something? But that just looks like sputum. Um, and then we don't see anything subglottically. OK, so then 0, 0. So then when it, we saw this, certainly this occurred during the swallow. Um, and there was no other changes. Um, so this would be a 1, 3, 1. Right. And so these swells are very different from these swell from this swell, right? So the PAS3 is not necessarily cap it's capturing only one part of something. Um here we we're talking about like something barely being present, and here there's something much more obvious happening here. Um so now it looks like certainly it's probably gonna be lowered down. So we, we see it in the pharynx, but we're still waiting for the during this follow onset. Yeah, so it looks, assuming this is uninterrupted it's here, so it's gonna be hypopharynx. Um, so, and then I don't know how I'm gonna tell us a bit. One, two. Yeah. So we advance the scope, so we stop it at that point. So that would be two. Um, cool. So you know, it's I think it's nice that we're making note of both locations while onset now because maybe that has something to do with what we're seeing here in terms of the penetration. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now I'll do this. Going back and forth, okay. Okay, again, 
So here we did get scope. She said she advanced the scope, um, which appeared to affect the pharyngeal residue, but not everything else. So I'm going to judge the pharyngeal residue before that point. Um, so yeah, here I would say maybe this side looks greater than this side. So um, in my head, I'm kind of thinking that this is maybe filling up. It looks like it's like half the height of this ligament. So in my head, I'm kind of thinking it's like more like 15%. This may be more like 5%-ish. So I'm gonna cut it in half and do 10 for the oral pharynx. Um, hypopharynx, just a super small amount. Yeah, especially if we kind of like wait here. Okay, so I'll say maybe three. Epiglottis. We don't really see anything. Vestibule. Oh, we do actually see some things. I'm going to adjust my epiglottis when I go back. But nothing anywhere else. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this to maybe like four. Zero, 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 one, 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 one. Here, full suppletion. Yeah, okay, so oral pharynx. And then number of swallows, one. Okay, so one, when he actually did a single swallow, like asked, we actually saw more residue, um, which is interesting to know. Um, okay, so now let's do another one with all of you. Let's go for another maybe 15 minutes till 11.45. Um, so now we're at slightly larger sips. Something a little bit more representative of normal sip size. This is a larger male, so 15 ml is still a little bit too small, but um, it's um, kind of within the range. All right, this is the same thing, but it's more of a normal size sip now, okay? So try to do the whole thing in a single swallow. Okay, so we'll go to finish the swallow. That's what we're left with. Oral pharynx. Not the fact that we did a single swallow here. Okay. What do we think? Okay, yeah, great. Um, I was inclined to say a little bit more. My original inclination was more like 20%-ish. I'm thinking, kind of thinking like I see like the outline of the ligament, but it's essentially there on the left, right? It's a little bit lower. So I would have like cut my losses, but I totally see like 15-ish too. You guys, you all said 15? 12, 12, 15, okay, great. Um, okay, then hypopharynx. Um, uh, epiglottis. Yeah, I don't think it's green. I'm down with zero. Vestibule, vestibule vocal folds of glottis. Great, I agree. One, uh, and then both sufficient follow onset. Okay, so I guess we didn't see anything, right? And then one swallow. 
Oh yeah, okay, it did not follow. Okay. So then oh cavity. Oops, sorry, thanks. Um so yeah, so it's like now we're kind of seeing this trend in terms of at least swallow timing, which is you know, we, we really get very little in terms of physiology for bees, but it would appear as though when he triggers the swallow earlier there seems to be less instances of airway invasion. And when it's a little, triggered a little bit later, it seems to be associated with um, the presence of airway invasion. When he does a single swallow as opposed to multiple swallows, we're kind of getting um, uh, increased exposure to um, impairments in swallowing efficiency. Um, all right, let's have you all do this now. Same thing. 15 milliliters white bed water. Recently, you're like, oh, it's not like stuff. Yeah, that's in your throat. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's, it's so crazy. People just have no sensation. Um, Maybe if I didn't show them the treatment. Yeah. Maybe like, that's my throat. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then <laughs> really this mind. is kind of what we're left <laughs> with. What do you think about this? Oral pharynx. Seventeen percent. Okay. Other thoughts? Yeah, I'm on the lower end. I'm on the lower end. I mean, see, I mean, the coating looks like it's like thicker, yeah. but it's still very two dimensional. So even though it's like thick in terms of its occupancy of this whole molecular, like from here straight across to about probably here. Like it's that's a little bit of pain. So there is this yeah. Like all the I guess that's the basic one. Mm -hmm. right? Like all of that doesn't count or does count? It does count. It does count. Yeah, it does count, but it's still all two-dimensional. And I think so. I get so you're thinking about like if you like literally scraped so it or something. Like a little shovel. Like a little shovel. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. So I guess I could, yeah, okay. All right. I think that's a good calibration for me. Yeah, because it's it, it is thicker if you like literally scraped it. Um, I could buy, but I don't think I would buy 17% because I, I was originally thinking closer to like 5% still. I think this would be like in terms of like these little poolings, but I think if we add up like all of this and literally scrape it, I could see it kind of getting up to like the 10% region. That's so low though because like the last one was 12%. Mm -hmm. like, do you find that when it's white, it looks like there's more than there is with any other color? Yeah. So, I mean, I think this because of the coating effect, right? Yeah. So in terms of coating, it, it gives us idea, like we just, we not that it looks like a lot, but that we just see more white because it's coating. Mm -hmm. Like, so in terms of like the actual, like number of pixels on this monitor that are showing white, there's a lot more. But if we compare it to, uh, it's a really good um, point that you just brought up. If we compare it to this, like here, like the amount of pooling is much greater on, the green one, right? Okay, I can buy that. Yeah. So, like here, this is actually like if we multiply this, we said what 15 for this. So we're saying, wait, you said you're good at math. So uh, this like six, six or seven, between six and seven, and you're good. So six or seven of these we get to 100%. This is not nearly the same as this, right? Um, like the amount of pooling that we're seeing here and here would not even equal this. And then this is certainly not close to this. Which I guess is like when, you, when there's a blizzard outside and you just can't see. Right. And then you like go there just black, we didn't get that much snow. Right, exactly, exactly. So okay. so that, that's where I was like, okay, this is like closer to like 5%. And then, but I could see if we like scraped this two dimensional okay, stuff, yeah. it might like boost it an extra one or two percent. Yeah. So I'm kind of closer to seven percent. And I think that is probably a representation of half of this, right? Mm -hmm. Um great, great um thing that you just brought up. Okay, so seven. Hypopharynx. Yeah. I mean we have coding, we saw a little drop, but that drop is still probably in the one to two percent 
category. Um, yeah, so let's say two. Epiglottis. So it's like we see spread of the entire thing that we're seeing, and then pretty much just like a blanket too. Yeah, so then, I mean, I think less because, yeah, because I think we're probably only seeing like 60% of the epiglottis right now. I mean, there's probably more. Um, so then we see if we can get more view. Okay, so now we see more view and it doesn't look like that coding coding. It looks like kind of more of the spread stuff happening. So maybe like 60% coding? Yeah, I, I mean, I could buy up to like 75 or something like that. I would probably say something like 65. I could buy a little bit more. Um, well, let's do something like 65, but I could, like I said, if someone said 75, I'd be like, great, love it. Um, okay, vestibule. So like here, like I would say, I'm gonna disagree with the 15, um, a decent amount, because here, if I thought this whole area was like 30%, I think that the spread of this area is complete. So it's covering this 30%. And then I would half that because of this kind of spread situation yeah. happening. So then this would be 15, this would be 15, if not a little bit more, plus who knows about the, so then the petiole. So if I was gonna be super specific, I would be like, this is the spread. Cut it in half, but I'm gonna up it a little bit because it's more than just like sporadic lines. So I would probably be like, this is actually like 20. And then I would say this is probably like 20 as well, because it's covering the entire spread of that 30%. I'm gonna half it, but I'm gonna up it a little bit more. And this looks like it's not like that complete coating. It's spread over the entire 30% area, but it's like much less. So I cut it in half and I do a little bit less. So that would be what 15. I'd bring that down to 10. That's so 35. I'm at around 50% because this, this side is like 20, this side is 20, this side is like 10. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then it's like, then the only other thing that we're missing is I'm waiting to see this AB duct to see what's up with the, the interarytenoid tissue, which probably won't contribute to much. And we actually don't see anything there. So I would say 50%. Um, okay, vocal folds. So now remember, we're thinking about the entire boundary and then expressing it relative to the superior surface of both vocal folds summed together. So you're thinking, um, and I think I agree with you, FYI. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so, so, so don't get scared off. Don't get scared off. But because I thought it was less. Because like this is like, almost all full, it's like 80% full, but it's like half, so it's like 40%. Okay. And then this, like a little bit, is probably about half, and then you have that. So it's like, maybe like maybe a little less, like this is bolder than this. So I'll put it up like 80, it's like 25, it's like maybe 15. Okay, other thoughts? I think it was like 40. I don't really think like medial, maybe that. On the, like the medial edge? Yeah. Okay. Like the okay. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have some of this. It looks like there's like lines, but we don't see too much of that surface area. So kind of what I was thinking of is I'm looking at, essentially what I'm doing is I'm like seeing all this and then I'm pushing it over here. And then exactly. So like I try to like locate things on one side as good as I can. So I like move all this over here. And then I think that it's essentially covering the entire surface, but then it's probably like these aren't super, super strong. So maybe it's a little bit less than 50%. So I'm at like the, mm -hmm. I would say 40 to 50, 45. I was going to go um, 30-ish, but I have a question. Yeah. The, um, it's not the laryngeal canyons. What is it called? The box. Vocal fold processes. Yeah, thank you. Yep. The vocal fold processes. Are you counting anything above that? Because it's not you, above it, but, but in the like, cartilaginous like, portion. Right. But um like this area so if you go to the big white yeah big red. so right above that that's we're counting that as part of the vocal cord right so when you say above spot, um towards the top of the muscle okay like up here um well the clear spot immediately above the here yeah, that, that's part of it correct 
yeah so the that would be like the ending point essentially of the um like where you're making the line is the ending yeah point. It's yeah. not the whole like triangle that you kind of not the whole triangle. No. Okay. Well, yeah. that makes more sense because okay. I was thinking that was got it. Got it. On this part, and so I was like, "There's no way what you're doing is fifty percent." Yeah, I've never thought about it in that much detail. What I would think, <laughs> what I would do probably is, um, if we think about the vocal processes as kind of having like a point, I would probably go to that point because that's where uh -huh. the membranous portion of the vocal folds is going to connect to, and then we start morphing to the cartilaginous portion. So I would probably go to that topmost kind of apex of the vocal cord process and call it good here. Okay. So that's probably, I've never actually thought about it. Maybe that'll change over time, but that's probably what I would do. Okay. So we'll say 45, subglottis. I heard a little voice reference there, but yeah. Like this little yeah, light spot? Okay. Mm -hmm. One. And then we did this at the beginning of this review, but the thing I would be wondering about is, is that sputum? Because it doesn't look exactly like this kind of same color, it's like bright white. That's so gonna be less bright because it's in the subglottis. Is it cartilage? Because we know we saw that. We know it's not. And if we actually look at the previous video clip, um, we don't see anything like this. And this person doesn't have patterns of secretions and like weird, spit bubble things in the subglottis so this was them immediately beforehand and we don't see anything it's so we're gonna go with uh what numbers did we say uh one or two yeah one or two okay okay i yeah. just wanted to be clear because this is where i've been really confused mm -hmm. so like number four. Oh yeah that's a Do good you see what i mean yeah that's where i'm confused so are you you, you when just I, said that you cut it off there, right? Yeah, so here it's um, because I'm saying this is the superior surface, but not necessarily the membranous portion of the vocal folds. So it's, I'll try to specify that. So like, because this is all still <clears throat> superior right now, uh -huh. but like the membranous portion kind of like, or like the vibrating portion of the vocal folds mm -hmm. like that area of the vocal folds is not doesn't vibrate so so you so this so picture needs to be adjusted it well it doesn't um or the the label because this is representing the superior surface just not the superior membranous portion do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so it's still superior and then we start to lose any sort of other superior surface but the membranous portion of the vocal folds would probably end right here um so yeah so there should probably be like an extra picture it's just we didn't do this beforehand representing the superior membranous portion of the vocal folds which would cut that triangle in half which is what we're would so use we're as like kind of the this. relative portion yeah okay yeah um so then in terms of uh PAS, we don't see any differences from uh, after or between. So the stuff probably happened either before or during. Okay, so let's see if we can identify the during. Okay, so this looks like it's. Is that the hypothermic Yep, exactly. Um, so. Uh, and we don't see anything now before. So this would be a one here, it would be an eight here, one, one. And then we said hypopharynx. And then, uh, is there a reason why it's not letting me? There we go. And then, um, wait, was it one swallow? One, two, okay, great. So then that was this swallow. Um, so this person had a max PAS of eight, but with very, very little amount of aspiration. Um, great. Okay. All right. Um, 
So we'll stop here. Uh,